Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series, case number 60. We have an amazing case, so let's go ahead and get started. Here we have a frontal view of the chest. And the question that I have for everyone is, what inheritance pattern is associated with the pathology shown? Is this an autosomal dominant disease, an autosomal recessive disease, a sex-linked disease, or is this acquired? What's the most, or what inheritance pattern is he associated with the pathologies shown? And the first thing I guess we should do when we're looking at a chest x-ray, and I know this is an MSK case, but always great to look at the lungs, right? So this here is the right lung. This is the left lung. We can see that there's some increased vascular markings throughout the lungs, particularly centrally. You know, that's not the purpose of the case. We want to look at the heart, the cardiomediastinal borders. There's no widening of the mediastinum. The trachea is midline. Uh, we can see the heart borders very well, so there's no evidence of pneumonia here. You know, probably not cardiomegaly or upper limits of normal heart. Uh, and then we want to look at the bones and the osteostructure. This is an MSK case, so we want to just kind of trace the ribs, make sure that, you know, we don't have any rib fractures, any rib lesions. We do that on the right side. We're going to do that along the left side. It starts posterior, posterior lateral coming anterior, posterior, posterior lateral coming anterior. We can do that all the way here. But sometimes what's interesting about these type of cases is sometimes the hardest thing is to recognize what's not there that's supposed to be there. And if we take a look here, we take a look at the scapula, you know, the part of the glenoid here, the scapula glenoid, but take a look at the clavicles. We're missing much of the clavicles. The only clavicle we see, it ends right here. Same thing here, the clavicle is right here, but then it ends right here. So we have hypoplastic bilateral clavicles. And that's the finding here, right? So this is an autosomal dominant disease. This is called cleidocranial dysplasia. Notice that we're missing much of the clavicles on both the right and the left side. And that's the finding here. So sometimes it's hard to recognize something that should be there that's not there. That can often be a very uh, problematic thing when we're talking about eye tests and identifying pathology. So this is a really nice case of cleidocranial dysplasia. Again, it's an autosomal dominant disease. This represents delayed ossification of midline structure. So the clavicle is a midline structure. Uh, it's often due to intramembranous ossification, right? So other things that can happen are, you know, the superior and inferior pubic rami, which are midline structures, can be hypoplastic, right? You can have uh, warmian bones, which means that there's intrasutural bone, right? You get um, ossicles, like bony ossicles in the cranium, and you get intrasutural bone. The sutures themselves become widened. Uh, you can get frontal bossing, which is just a fancy term for a very prominent forehead. You can get hypertelarism, which again is a fancy word for having eyes that are very widely spaced apart. Okay. You can also get like a protruding jaw or mandible. All of these are findings that we see typically in cridocranial dysplasia, cleidocranial dysostosis, all the same terms for the same pathology, right? You can often get a narrow thorax. You can get vertebral malformations, again, because the vertebra or the spine are is a midline structure, right? So anything that involves a midline structure is maybe involved in this cleidocranial dysplasia. I want to just show a CT image on bone windows of the, the cranium and the calvarium. And notice that we have intrasutural bone here, right? We have, this is a young person where we have warmian bones. These are intrasutural bone that shouldn't normally be here, right? So this is what warmian bones would look like on a CT examination, an axial CT on bone window. So just another image to go along with the frontal view of the chest for this great case of cladocranial dysplasia, which of course is an autosomal dominant inheritance mode. Thank you so much for your attention. Please subscribe to our MedED page, support our mission in, in passing on free knowledge to the world. And we'll see you next week for another MSK unknown case.